this is where the greatest was born and where he's been laid to rest. Louisville, Kentucky, forever the home of the incomparable Muhammad Ali. So much of his story is legend, and he started boxing here after coming to report the theft of his bike. He was a guy that talked to me, advised me, taught me how to believe in myself, and those same attributes that he did then, I live by them now. He's going to be missed. Family members are going to miss him, and the community here is going to miss him. How much of a difference did he make to black America back then? Pride. A lot of pride and stand up for yourself and stand up for what you believe. He was the greatest. All I can say, he was the greatest. Before Cassius Clay, heavyweight shoots to box like this, they'd come forward snarling and aggressive, trying to be in your face. Jack Dempsey, Sonny Liston, John Louis, they'd try and walk you down and pin you down. They were front foot fighters. They wouldn't back off. Then came a young man who tore the script up. He moved like a flyweight, inspired by the wrestler Gorgeous George. He was on his toes, hands down by his side. He smiled, he moved, he grooved like a lightweight. He was so fast, you couldn't believe he was a heavyweight. He invented the Ali Shuffle. What cheek, what bravado, what confidence, what speed. Bah, 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 bah. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. You just can't hit when well, you just can't see. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. He made mistakes, he did it all wrong but got it all right. Relied on his cat-like reflexes, leant back, slipped out of the way, but still boop, popped him with that quick, fast jab. He often just flicked his shots out. What a jab he had, it was so fast, so sharp, so accurate, and ba 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 ba. After his three years forced exile out of the ring, that's when he showed his true skill. He was heavier, he was fuller, he was more flat-footed, he was slower and older. So then he had to rely on his skill using the footwork, walking around the ring, instead of dancing around the ring. He slipped, he popped, he boxed, but he showed so much skill, still like a flyweight. Look at the speed, and he showed he could fight too. Ba, 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 But then against big George Foreman, successful as he was, Muhammad Ali showed us something completely different. He leant on the ropes, he blocked the shots, he slipped the shots, he popped the shots, kept picking and popping until big George was getting tired and slow, and again, the skill, the accuracy was flying through. What did he do? Boom, boom, boom. Eight rounds later, took out Big George, and then the rope adult was born. So charismatic, so skillful, so magical outside the ring, but it's so easy to forget how good and fast and classy he was in the ring. You've got messages here from children, from mothers, from fathers all just using that word which is overused so much in this world and that is great and that's that's exactly what it was how much of a difference does Ali make to this town a huge a difference indescribable really very much for the community for the the city the state and the nation and we I cannot say enough about all that Ali has done we can't thank him enough for everything and so um, this is just a small token of our appreciation for all that Muhammad Ali has done the word great was made for you. Rest in peace. I can't believe this is the house he was brought up in, or even imagine what the world was like back then. But Louisville was his home as Andy Scott explains. He belonged to the world, and the world belonged to him. But to the end of his astonishing life, Louisville, Kentucky was the place Muhammad Ali called home. And it was entirely fitting that it is here that thousands were able to stand and pay their respects to a man whose like none of us will ever see again. It was on the steps of his childhood home in Grand Avenue in the city's West End that Ali, then Cassius Clay, would sit with his brother and dream of all that they would do with their lives. It was at the Columbia Auditorium on South 4th Street that as a brash, outraged 12-year-old, he strode into Joe Martin's boxing gym, yelling and screaming that his brand new red bicycle had been stolen. An incident that has gone into legend as the moment his love affair with boxing began. 
Martin, a local policeman, suggested that if he was going to make such threats, he better learn how to back them up. It was at Central High School that he told his teachers that he was going to be the heavyweight champion of the world. And it was in and around Chickasaw Park that he put in the miles before school, showing the kind of discipline that made his headmaster at the time predict that he would be more famous and wealthy than any of those who taught him put together. It wasn't all romance and glittering success, of course. Ali, as a black youngster growing up here, was aware each and every day that there were places he could not go, restaurants that he could not eat in, water fountains and restrooms he could not use. If the story that he threw his Olympic gold medal into the Ohio River in disgust at being refused service in a restaurant turned out to be false, then the sentiment was accurate. But in the end, it showed the world what an extraordinary man he had become. And as the rest of his long life brought its immense physical, moral and psychological tests, Ali proved time and time again, both in and out of the ring, just how very special he was. The people of Louisville always knew that. After all, this was the place that nurtured him, that was home to the folk who knew him best to whom he would return in private year after year. Now in their thousands, they have had their chance to say their own very special farewell. And we ourselves have the privilege of being here to bear witness that the world was a better place for Muhammad Ali having passed through it. May he rest in peace. He moved here at uh, four years old, and he lived here till he was 18 and went to the Olympics in Rome. And this is this place here, you, you've eventually acquired it to make it a museum piece? Yeah. Uh, when I found out it was for sale, as a historian uh, and a huge fan of Muhammad Ali, I felt like I had to buy this and preserve it for history. It's just been open three or four weeks, and uh, to have it open and, and ready uh, before he passed is just incredible. That people, we've had people from Africa, Asia, all around the world come here and tour it, and everyone is so inspired to see that it could be anyone from any neighborhood, it doesn't matter where it is, that can do something so special. He was always inspired to be a boxer. When he was about nine or 10 years old, he'd always have me to hold my hands up so he could sp uh, shatter box in my hand. He did that for years. There was a big cigar tree in the front of his yard, and if he couldn't find me, he would shatter box against that tree. He babysat your daughter, is that right? Yeah, that's my daughter. He babysat you? Yeah, he he, really baby he babysat <laughs> her, yeah. yeah. We didn't know we were among greatness then, <laughs> back in the day. But uh, yeah, he was a great babysitter. What does his passing mean to you? Are you? It's just surreal. It's just surreal. What would have been sad if we didn't have the turnout that we had today? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. how can you be sad when you see thousands of people? Right. And not, we're not even counting around the world. Yeah. The world, not yeah. just the states, the world. Love and feel Ali. Ali Shuffle, we can do Ali Shuffle. Talk, that's, that's right. It. I can dance, come on, roll with it. That's the Ali Shuffle on your toes. That's the Ali Shuffle, that's what he did. Are you gonna fight or we don't wanna fight? <laughs> We're talking about Muhammad Ali. He's the one with the one, two, three. Humanitarian all over the world. Helping little boys and little girls. He's the greatest. And this is the latest. The home of Muhammad Ali, Louisville, Kentucky. Tens of thousands of people lined the streets of Louisville, Kentucky to say a final farewell to the greatest, Muhammad Ali. This is the scene currently, and it's been the scene for a while. We're supposed to be getting underway at uh, half past two. We are running a little bit late with the procession, but uh, Glenn McCrory, who's with us in the studio, you just mentioned that uh, Ali always used to like to take his time. Yes, and in life, <laughs> as, in, as in death, you know, he... he no, you know, you waited for Muhammad Ali, and you know he was worth waiting for. I think people people know that that was that was part of the man. You can see the scene if we just spin around and see that for three and a half miles the crowds are like this, five to ten deep. It's hard to describe how I feel. How, how do you feel, ma'am? It is hard to describe. It's a bittersweet, bittersweet day. 
for our hero and the greatest. I remember him when I was a kid. We're only like 12 years apart, but he used to come into the skating ring where we were and he used to pretend like he was all our uncles and we would run to him. He was just that kind of guy. So it is bittersweet sweet, and we would stand out here for another 10 hours just to see and say goodbye and honor a great man. We really would. Well, certain members of the family have just started to emerge uh, from the funeral home as we uh, await this uh, funeral getting underway. Uh, Muhammad's uh, wife, Lonnie, his daughters, Mariam and Rashida are there, as well as his uh, brother, uh, Rahman Ali, as well. This is uh, the pallbearers making their way uh, out. You can see Mike Tyson there on the left-hand side, Will Smith there, a couple behind, uh, and Lennox Lewis. A yeah, mix of uh, Muhammad Ali's family and, and the people that he inspired. And there's the moment, there is the, the coffin of Muhammad Ali uh, making its way out of the funeral home. And this is where sadness picks this as well. So the moment has come. Muhammad Ali and the chants of Ali are starting up now. Is on the way to his final resting place. He'll pass by the Muhammad Ali Center. Muhammad Ali Boulevard, named after him back in 1978 after he captured the world title for a record third time. And then it'll be into his home neighborhood. 3302 Grand Avenue was where he grew up. It's been a remarkable place to experience this week. A lot of tears will doubtless be shed there before he'll pass his old school Central High, his old Columbia gym, where he learned the tricks of the trade that would serve him so well before finally arriving at Cave Hill Cemetery. There was remarkable sadness uh, on those first shots when Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis came out. We've all been talking about the great man, the greatest for the last few days, obviously since it happened. And, and I think that was the first moment of, of silence, of, of, of real sadness. And I think the lady that spoke to Craig mm. was, the, the story was fantastic with the, the, the skating ring and, and, and the uncle and the figure. But what she said about being a bittersweet day hit the nail on the head. I think that's exactly what it is. I think people have a lot of emotions and are not quite sure where, where they are, the family, those, those closest, it's, it's very somber. To be honest, seeing, the, seeing the, the, the coffin for the, the first time was, for me, it just, all of a sudden, it's something that you, you, you think you prepare yourself for. You know, we've expected it for a long, for a long, long time. Um, and then all of a sudden, it just dawns on you for that thing that this is real, this, this is, you know, he's gone. This is actually, you know, it's actually happening. And, that, you know, just took my, took the wind out my sails for a little bit. Yeah. Just, just, yeah, it was, I totally, um, I totally felt that, Bob. Yeah, I, I appreciated the, the moment um, that we've been waiting f for this to start for a while. We've been thinking, well, what's going to be the reaction of the people? And then, yeah, now we know that our lives, those of us who've, who've had him as a part of our life, even during the last 30 years where he's not been as visible and he's not been as loud for obvious reasons, he's not there anymore. And this is our chance to, to, to pay the final respects. And it is, yeah, the, the, there are calls of Ali going on there, but, but it's respectful, it's not boisterous. Mm. But you can see, and this is, this is just Louisville, but I think where, you know, wherever you go in the world, people will be watching sitting, these pictures, watching a uh, TV, watching these pictures. It's it's that, it's it's that bigger thing. I can't see anyone ever being able to to attract this much respect, um, this much appreciation from ordinary people from so many different walks of life. I, I just don't think there will ever be anyone like him again. And uh, yes, there are sporting heroes, but and each generation brings a new one. But I don't think there'll ever be a, a man like this again. So I don't think there will be an occasion to, to compare with this, really. We talked about Muhammad Ali and 
being there on the day that Barack Obama was, was sworn in as the first black American president. Uh, Barack Obama can't be at the funeral today because he's attending his daughter's graduation, but uh, he has just released this message from the White House. I don't know how good of a boxer I am. Uh, I have had to slug it out a little bit here in Washington. And there have been times where I've been the underdog. Uh, just like the champ, there have been times where I got beat up a little bit uh, and had to come back. And that sense of resilience, uh, that's what these boxing gloves represent to me. So I just want to say to uh, not just all the fans around the world uh, who uh, drew such inspiration from Muhammad Ali, uh, but most importantly uh, to his family, uh, to Lonnie and, and, and the kids and, and everybody who uh, I know is, is celebrating a life during this week. Um, uh, you know, it, it's very rare uh, where a figure captures the imagination of the entire world. And it's even rare when that figure uh, does so by being open and funny and generous uh, and courageous. Um, he was one of a kind. And uh, in my book, he'll always be the greatest. God bless him. Lovely, lovely words one of a kind um, I agree with Bob we'll never see anything like this again in our sport um, I don't think we'll ever see anyone like Muhammad Ali again in the world um, the greatest sportsman of the 20th century in my opinion and one of the great great human beings as well um, all of these things subjective of course but Barack Obama you know the most powerful man the the president that became the first black president partly because of what Ali did all those years ago it, it, and seeing the boxing gloves Glenn just just on his mantelpiece there a souvenir uh, he, he's a fan too it, it, I mean that, that just sums it up doesn't it the fact that the most powerful leader in the world has got his memorabilia out you know his, his Ali memorabilia and you know he'll 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 relish the fact that he shook the hand that shook the world as, as so many of us as so many of us do, but it just gives you an insight into how big he is. And the fact that, you know, he's been inspired himself by Muhammad Ali. Elvis Presley was a fan, so Tom Jones, you know, the Beatles, every, you know, in his day, everybody wanted to be and, seen. And everybody wanted to be seen with Ali. He was brilliant, but he was also flawed. And I think, you know, that controversial. The humanity yeah. of, you know, people realize that, you know, we're all flawed and, and, yeah. and he was, he was, he was flawed. And, you know, he, at times he was outspoken and he didn't do the right thing. He didn't say the right thing. At times he was a little cruel. You know, I mean, he mocked opponents terribly. But, but for, for some reason, you know, he always had a smile and we forgive him. And, and I think that's what, what drew people to him. And how he eventually. And, and, and that coupled with yeah. his illness. Yeah. And the way he, you know, he handled success like a champion. He handled illness like a champion. With you know, he dealt with and, it with and, dignity yeah. and courage, and and you know he, when he lit the flame, so brave oh. in Atlanta to do to do that, you know, to put himself out on show to the world that he wasn't the great champion anymore, he wasn't the athlete, the, the pretty boy anymore. Yeah. He was an elderly man with a, with, a, with a disability. Years. That was 20 years ago. The bravery of the man to to, to do that on on that sort of stage, and now the rightful stage for, for, for something like, like this, a day where everybody has their chance to, to remember, reflect, let their emotions out in, in whichever manner they see, they see fit. Ali's burial took place in a private ceremony. Then finally, family, friends and fighters packed the local arena at an emotionally charged, multi-faith funeral service. <laughs> Muhammad indicated that when the end came for him, when his, he wanted us to use his life and his death, as a teaching moment for young people 
for his country, and for the world. In effect, he wanted us to remind people who were suffering that he had seen the face of injustice, that he grew up in a segregation, and that during his early life, he was not free to be who he wanted to be. But he never became embittered enough to quit or to engage in violence. Muhammad was not one to give up on the power of understanding the boundless possibilities of love and the strength of our diversity. For his part, he saw the good soul in everyone. And if you were one of the lucky ones to have met him, you know what I meant. He awoke every morning thinking about his own salvation, and he would often say, I just want to get to heaven, and I've got to do a lot of good deeds to get there. And I think Muhammad's hope is that his life provides some guidance on how we might achieve for all people what we aspire for ourselves and our families. Thank you. So let me tell you a story about a man. A man who refused to believe that reality was a limitation to achieve the impossible. A man who once reached up through the pages of a textbook and touched the heart of an eight-year-old girl whose reflection of herself mirrored those who could not see past the color of her skin. But instead of drawing on that pain from the distorted reality, she found strength, just as this man did when he stood tall in the face of pelting rain and shouted, I am the disturbance in the sea of your complacency, and I will never stop shaking your waves. When I look into this crowd, I smile. I smile to recognize that he is not really gone. He lives in you, and he lives in me, and he lives in every person that he has touched in every corner of this world. Every one of his fights was an aura of a Super Bowl. He did things nobody would do. He predicted the round that he would knock somebody out in, and then he would do it. He was funny. He was beautiful. He was the most perfect athlete you ever saw, and those were his own words. <laughs> My friends, only once in a thousand years or so do we get to hear a Mozart or see a Picasso, read a Shakespeare. Ali was one of them, and yet, at his heart, he was still a kid from Louisville who ran with the gods and walked with the crippled and smiled at the foolishness of it all. He is gone, but he will never die. Thank you. My enduring image of him is like a little reel in three shots. The boxer I thrilled to as a boy, the man I watched take the last steps to light the Olympic flame when I was president. And I'll never forget it. I was sitting there in Atlanta. By then, we knew each other. By then, I felt it. I had some sense of what he was living with. And I was still weeping like a baby, seeing his hand shake and his leg shake, and knowing, by God, he was going to make those last few steps. No matter what it took, the flame would be lit, the fight would be won. The spirit would be affirmed. I knew it would happen. And then this the children whose lives he touched, the young people he inspired. It's the most important thing of all. We should honor him by letting our gifts go among the world as he did. God bless you, my friend, go in peace. It's been an amazing, humbling, emotional experience for former presidents, former fighters, friends, and family as Louisville, Kentucky said goodbye to one of its favorite sons. 
Muhammad Ali, rest in peace.